checking out the show with a glass of eye. Looking at the sun dancing through the sky, did he come by you On the next Phoenix Lights Petroglyphs in the Sky UFO show, we will be taking a closer look at a supposedly photograph that was taken March 13, 1997 of a V-shaped light formation that has just now been made public. Is it real or is it CGI? Find out with me as we take a closer look into this fo- into this rare photo. I'll also be showing a never seen before UFO video that I filmed a few months ago. Also an insane UFO that was filmed in Colorado. This this thing guys will blow your doors off this is crazy stuff so all of that and more can be seen only here on the paranormal family channel right here on Roku so make sure you search that Roku app on your Roku devices so you won't miss any other exciting paranormal shows like this one look for the official time and date of this showing that will be posted right here on my Facebook channel see you guys there you won't want to miss this new episode Checking out the show with a glass of eye. Looking at the sun dancing through the sky. Did he come by you? Hello, welcome back to another Phoenix Lights, Petroglyphs in the Sky UFO show right here on the Paranormal Family Channel right here on Roku. Glad you guys are here tonight. We've got a great show. How is everybody doing? We're kicking off 2024. Can you believe it? Hope you guys had a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And, uh, you know, this is going to be a great, great year. Um, Why? Because... We're here. We're live here on Roku, and you guys are a part of it. So glad you guys are here. I have a great show tonight. My name is Jeff Woolwine. Welcome to the Phoenix Lights Petroglyphs in the Sky UFO show. A little bit about me. I was born in Phoenix, Arizona. Been seeing these lights ever since I was a kid. That's what made me want to go out and try to figure out what was going on here in our skies? And I believe I did. I started in 2004. I was seeing these Phoenix lights on the east side of South Mountain. And as a matter of fact, we're going to show you one of the sightings that I filmed. And we're going to get a little bit of different take on it. Because in real time, as I'm filming this light out there, I'm using different filters on it like I'm using night vision and then I use like this type of pastel type filter that that was in the camera at the time and it it really made the light well let's say it's a new perspective on what they're doing what they look like it's pretty neat we're going to show you that right here tonight and so yeah you know I wanted to find out what was going on and you know basically what I did was I put archaeology and history and a lot of patience you know a lot of sky watching UFO research um, and to the Phoenix Lights and 15 years of research 15 years of research matter of fact let's pull this up here is my books and you know I started this in 2004 and then they're see- they're telling us we're seeing flares. So, you know, I moved to South Mountain in 2005. Um, and I wanted to get some day shots. Plus, you know, all my archaeology stuff, all my research on UFOs, all the credibility. And that's that's what it is here. We want credibility. We, we don't want hearsay. I mean, we want what's really there. We want facts, okay? We don't want any... Well, I think this and I think that. No, dude, that's got to go. Okay, let's get into the deep, dark facts of stuff. And that's what I did, man. 15 years of research 
into this book. And it talks about the Holcom Indians because the Holcom was the first tribe who lived here in Phoenix, Arizona. And they actually saw and recorded the Phoenix Lights way before us over a thousand years ago. And that was the kicker. That was the key there. You know, I I ended up finding out that there was petroglyphs on South Mountain there. And, and so I'm thinking, hey, you know, we got strange lights in the sky. Now we have strange markings out there on the mountains. You know, there's got to be some kind of connection here. And, you know, lo and behold, uh, I was right. You know, I, I contacted a Native American, a, a very shaman-type leader um, who works at one of the Pueblo Indian Art Museum in downtown Phoenix. I saw him on Channel 8 in 2004, the beginning of 2004. Up there talking about the rock art, talking about petroglyphs. And the guy that was with them was like, hey, you know, this stick figure man, Looks like he's pointing up at something above his head. And the guy turns around and says, yes, that's part of our tradition here. That's part of our history here. That's part of our oral tradition is that our people saw and recorded things in the sky on places on, you know, where it occurred at. And I'm like, wait a minute, hold on, wait, wait, what are you talking about? Wait a minute. So this is 2004. The Phoenix Lights occurred in 1997, right? But yet no one's talking about these petroglyphs. No one's talking about the Native American stuff, theories, myths, legends on what these lights in the skies are. No one's talking about the petroglyphs that are connected to UFOs out there. Well, hey, <laughs> you know... That's what I did. I went out there to try to find some answers. I called the guy up, and we went out there, and we talked about uh, the petroglyphs, and um, he was telling me about these spirals, um, and we'll get into the spirals a little bit later on how they're doorways into the underworld. I mean, it was heavy stuff, and we'll and through time over this whole year, uh, right here on the Roku channel, the Paranormal Family channel, uh, we'll be talking about this history. We'll be talking about South Mountain, uh, Phoenix, Arizona's true history. Okay, we're going to get into that through this whole year on this show. So I'm so glad that you are here and you subscribe to this channel because more information is coming. And if you want to cheat a little bit, then go ahead and, and, and pick up this book right here. Go ahead and hit the scan button and pick up those books. And uh, this is a nonprofit book also. I'm not in it for the money. I don't receive a dime for any of this stuff. Uh, this is all volunteer work and you know i did this for my own self i wanted to find out what was going on you know not to get famous not to make money but for my own self on just what the heck because like i said i've been seeing him in the sky ever since i was a kid so i wanted to find out exactly what was going on and i believe i found some answers through a lot of patience a lot of hiking on south mountains not only south mountain but the mountains around the valley of the sun Understanding understanding the petroglyphs, a lot of sky watching. I mean, holy cow, I have got hundreds and hundreds of UFO films uh, that I wish I could show you all. But here in, this, in these books here uh, are still photographs of some of my uh, videos. And uh, so you know what it is? It's a, it's a huge book. It's like, what, 1,600 pages. Okay, so it's huge. All right, it's colored photographs. It's talking about the petroglyphs. It's talking about the history of Phoenix. Okay, so it's huge. All right, and so the first book, the book on the bottom, that is basically the story, and so that will take you through a magical type story adventure on on going back to when the Holocom Indians were here in Phoenix. Um, and uh, when the Mayans were here, because yes, the Mayans were here also, the book goes into that also. And it, it, it talks about the history and it explains on what the petroglyphs are. Now the top book, uh, The Covered Up History of Phoenix, Arizona, now that, that, that is a whole, that's the whole entire book. Okay, so that's the, that's the movie part of it and that's the petroglyphs and, and a whole bunch of other um, information that led up to the white book. Uh, and this, the white book is basically a movie. So I wrote it as a movie. 
Um, so you have your options here. You can, and I, what I would do is I would pick up uh, the covered up history of Phoenix, Arizona, because that's cheap. Okay, so this is the ebook. Find this on Kindle. The other book is a little bit more pricey because that's published book. Uh, it's got colored photographs, hard and soft covers. So yeah, that's going to be a little bit more pricey. But if you just want to find out what's going on here, the truth. Uh, check out the covered up history of Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, search my name on on Amazon Kindle, or go ahead and and scan the uh, the barcodes here, and that'll take you directly to the book. And here we're, we're going to talk about history. We're going to talk about UFOs. Okay, we're going to talk about what really happened to the Holocom Indians. Okay, all of that's in this book. Fifteen plus years of research. Uh, it's not just hearsay, you know, I've lived here, I've experienced it all my life. Uh, I've climbed the mountains, I've found a lot of stuff that has, hasn't been told in 80, in 80 years. And here's the thing, here's the kicker. See, I'm not saying anything that hasn't been said before. This isn't just my theory. This isn't just what I believe these Phoenix Lights is, or what I believe these UFOs are, okay? So I was going down this one road, okay? thinking what everybody else thinks. But when I looked into it, the history was taking me down another road. And I'm sorry, I have to go where the credibility is. I have to go where history is talking about what these Phoenix Lights is, what these because it is. There is a history here. The carvings on the mountains around Phoenix, Arizona are UFO sightings, point blank. That's it. They are talking about what we see in the skies today. This is why I call it petroglyphs in the sky. Is it spaceships in the sky? No. Petroglyphs in the sky because that's what we're seeing. We are seeing not crafts, not aliens, ladies and gentlemen. But living creatures, another type of living being. You know, just as the oceanographers are finding new species of life below the ocean, this is a new species of life right here on planet Earth. And again, I'm going to tell you another secret, too. They're not from another world. This is their planet also. This is their home. They have always uh, been here. And that's the fascinating part about it because, you know, SETI and all these scientists and all these sky watchers are looking for intelligent life on the outskirts of our solar system. But I think we should probably start looking in our own backyards because they're here. That is what's going on. These mountains, right? And we'll get into that here on, the, on later shows, I'm sure, is a source. These energy spots is the key, is the source for UFO activity. And it just so happens the mountains around Phoenix, boy, it's full of energy. It's full of fault lines. And that's what these creatures are all about. When we see this Phoenix lights tonight, when we're showing you, what I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you what he's hovering right above. Okay, where he is, where he is right above that area. What's in that area today. So they're here for a reason, okay? And they've always been here. They're not crafts, okay? And I think crafts are cool. I have seen some things in the sky that could resemble a spaceship. Don't get me wrong. I have seen a black triangle. I have seen what looks like jacks in the sky counterclockwise less than a thousand feet up I uh, that are those crafts spaceships could be but I think what the majority of the public is seeing because I've seen it firsthand I've been there I've seen it I've witnessed it I documented it I matched them to the petroglyphs on the mountains and no one has done that before this is how important this information is because this story, this information has been covered up for over 80 years. This has always been here. This information has always been with us. 
we just fail to look in that direction. Because why? We are looking for spaceships. We are looking for little aliens. But what if something else is here? What if these orbs, what if these lights that we see in the skies, what are these other little things that we're seeing? What if it's not a spaceship at all, not technology, not technology, but living creatures, living entities? The petroglyphs on the mountains up there, the archaeologist likes to call them anthropomorphs. They're shape-shifting. And that's what they're doing. This is what the Native Americans has been telling us this whole time, right? They're spirits. They're shapeshifters, right? And they go up on the mountains, right? And they talk to the spirits. Well, it's the Phoenix Lights. It's the UFOs that they're talking to. And it's not technology. See, technology we understand. And this is, you know, one of the big, you know, areas here is we understand technology because we've built spaceships, right? We've traveled to the moon, blah, blah. We've got satellites out there. We understand technology. But for something like this, this is not technology. This is another creature, right? And if you ask me, because I've seen them firsthand, they're monsters, <laughs> And I seriously believe that even though they're going to talk about disclosure and what's really here, blah blah, it's going to lead another. It's going to lead us down another path of disinformation. Something that we can understand, that we can relate to. Spaceships, crafts, aliens from another world. Don't get me wrong; it's possible. Aliens are out there. Why not? The scientists have found seven Earth-like planets on the outskirts of our solar system. So what's to say there's a, there's a, an, what's not to say that there's like another intelligent race out there who has built a spaceship, who has visited Earth? I'm open to that. Okay, I'm willing to believe that if I can find proof. Now, I find evidence of proof of beings coming here, okay? Not in spaceships, but they have been here before at least four times in history, in, in Earth's history. Because we have to look at the Native American point of view on all of this. Is according to them, we're like in the third or fourth world and we're about ready to enter the fifth right and every time the world changes history shows that man the people at, at, at that day when the world has changed has turned has got over it's being frozen or been set on fire or flooded when man survives this he needs help and guidance and that's where history takes a, a role and with these phoenix lights and with these ufos because these beings these creatures helped each time this has happened before this is history this isn't anything that hasn't happened before and the native americans have documented all this for us up there on the mountains they tell us they're carving those those petroglyphs for us this is those glyphs out there is meant for our generation because we're seeing now what they saw over a thousand years ago. That's it. And they've documented these things. They've documented it for us. They, they, they're showing us what to look for, how to see them, where to see them. Right? They've done all of that for us. All we have to do is have an open mind, okay? Understand a little bit of the people and the sky and the culture and the history and get out there in the field, get out there and walk the trails that they have walked, hike the sacred mountains, understand the petroglyphs and put the cherry on top. See these things for yourself on the mountains as I have. And once that happens, boy, that's it. I mean, you are like convinced that, look, 
this is another creature, okay? And each time these creatures have been with us who has interacted with man, man has needed them to survive. But let's look at the history here. Hohokam is a Pima word for the people who are gone, the people who are missing. Because we don't know what happened to these people. They lived here in Phoenix for a thousand years. And then one day, they disappeared. They vanished. The Pimas consider themselves ancestors to the Hohokam. And they call the Hohokam the people who are gone, the people who are taken away. Because we don't know what happened to these people. They were here for over a thousand years and they just disappeared. Now, when you and I take our, when we, when you and I move, right, we take our belongings with us. And, and yet the, the, the archaeologist wants us to believe that the whole comp people was just a simple, peace-loving people who made pots and, and had canals and, and made friends with everybody. And it was just so cool. And then one day it got too hot. So they decided to leave their farm, their farmland and everything else that they have accomplished and just walk somewhere else and go somewhere else. Okay. Where'd they go? And again, here we go with hearsay. Right? There's no evidence of where they went. Right? Because we would find where they went. But we don't. They're here for a thousand years. They disappeared. And when you and I move, they would take their belong we take our belongings with us, but yet the whole comms didn't. They didn't take nothing. They left everything behind and simply vanished. So, my point is, they saw the Phoenix lights. They saw what was going on here. They saw the things in the sky just as, as we do today. But they went a step further. These things actually came down, interacted with mankind. And then these people disappear. Can you see where I'm getting that? So they saw the lights. They disappeared. We're seeing the lights. What's, what's our future is to come? What's going to happen next, right? Because that's everyone's asking me, well, dude, how come they're, land, they're, not, they're not landing on the, on the White House long? How come they haven't made contact with us yet, right? Because we don't need them. So right now they're watchers. They're watchers in the sky. And they're waiting for mankind to need them once again and have this new world start over just as it was in the beginning. So it was in the time of the beginning, so it shall be in the time of the end, right? And vice versa. That's it. So when you start looking at all, all this perspective, when you start looking at this angle of this scenario <laughs> right things start the puzzle starts to come together you know the glyphs I, I i i like to i like to look at the three points of credibility here not hearsay oh we think this and we think that but we can't prove it right there's an alien over there and there's an alien in my closet but i can't prove it okay there's a spaceship that went over uh, the, the, the Phoenix, Arizona in 97, but we can't prove it. Right? So, no, this is, we're looking at the three points of credibility that we can prove here. One, we can read about these things anywhere from 3,000 to 7,000 years ago from these archaeology texts, from these prehistoric texts, if you will, from the Anunnaki, from the Sumerians, right? From the Essenes, right? We can read about this stuff. And then that's, that's the first. Now, the second credibility, if we can read about it now, we can honestly say now through my research, through my proof, that the petroglyphs are talking about these things in the sky. Now, not all the not all petroglyphs do, not all mountains do, right? But the mountains with spirals and what the archaeologists like to call anthropomorphs, shapeshifters, serpents, orbs, triangles, weird 
things that these stick figure men are looking up at. Orbs and lights. Anthropomorphs. They're changing shape. They're morphing. Those are the mountains that are sacred. Those are the mountains that are hot spots. Those are the mountains of the source of where to see these UFOs at. Some mountains have petroglyphs on them, of course. But they're not considered like holy mountains. Sure, they're sacred. Everything is sacred. But they're not holy. They don't have spirals on them and they don't have anthropomorphs. What do they have? They have hunting and gathering. They have kachinas, ceremonies. Okay? Which is cool. Those That's awesome art also. That's great storytelling. That's great history. And that's what it is. That's It's history. And these petroglyphs are marking the spot where the event took place at. So you see petroglyphs on one side, but you don't see petroglyphs on the other side because nothing happened over there. It happened over here. This is where the glyphs are. It's a written testimony. It's history of what happened in that area. And it's meant for our generation. So it's meant for us to understand. And so it's heavy. It's deep. This is a deep, heavy subject. And, you know, I learned all of this on my own. I didn't have nobody to teach me anything. I just went on a, get, on a, hit, on a, on a theory, on a guess, on a hunch, you know. And all the pieces seemed to come in place. Okay, we got lots of stuff, and I and I can babble for hours about this. Okay, I mean, you know, so I, this is my passion. This is what I love to do, and so I've been doing this for years. Um, I'm I'm not like I said before. I'm not saying anything that hasn't been said before, right? And through the petroglyphs, oh yeah, I got I I got sidetracked. So we're talking about the, the three credibilities, <laughs> so we can read about them. We can see that we can see the prehistoric photographs on the rock art. Through my research, we can honestly say now, yes, we know for a fact that the petroglyphs on South Mountain and the petroglyphs around Phoenix, Arizona are prehistoric UFO sightings without a shadow of a doubt. This is it. It is not just some random story of hunting and gathering and, and, and ceremonies. No. This is a story of what really happened to these people, who they dealt with, who they saw. Okay? So, without a shadow of a doubt, we know for a fact that these petroglyphs are talking about UFOs. So that's the second credibility. The third credibility is now we're seeing them. Right? So we can read about them. We can see the photographs now. And we see them for our own eyes. There is the three points of credibility. That is my pyramid of credibility. And like I said, I was going down this road. But history and everything else, man, I'm telling you, was taking me down another road. And when I first discovered this in 2005, man, boy, I tell you what, you know. I mean, if this was a this was great. You know, this is why I made the media so much back then is because this was a new take on the Phoenix Lights. No one has done this before. Has matched the Phoenix Lights to the rock art on the mountains of Phoenix. Okay, so that was big news back in 2005 when I first discovered that. I went on to do the pilot for the UFO Hunter show later on in 2000. That was in 2005. Later on in 2007, I did the show. And by now, you know, that's couple years later I've got more information and more facts to present them and but they were telling me that I couldn't talk about it they said Jeff you're filming some bizarre stuff the public isn't ready for that so you can't go saying living creatures living entities you're gonna have to tell you have to, you're gonna have to say it's spaceships crafts technology I just didn't understand that at first and I was pissed you know because I was like dude the public better get ready for it because this is what's here. And of course, my stuff was analyzed before it made the news. 
You know, my stuff was looked at. I had to give, I had to give News Channel Three my my raw uh, high eight videotapes because that's what we had back in two thousand five. Uh, my high eight videotapes, you know, and 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 present them. I even still, I, I'm, I was so paranoid. I had News Channel Three uh, write me out a contract because I was afraid I was going to give them my evidence, my my lights, and my UFO, you know, film, uh, and never see it again. So I made them write me a contract. I still have it today. <laughs> <laughs> Say, and, I, and, you know, guarantee me that after you analyze my stuff, you know, you're going to give the stuff back to me, right? I still have that. And, and yeah, dude. So my stuff was analyzed. It's real. I, I, I haven't been hoaxing nothing. And when they found out that the rock art matches what I'm filming, that was huge. Okay? No one has done that before. This was huge stuff. And so... <laughs> When I'm doing the UFO Hunter show, I'm like, dude, I got more information, more evidence, more proof, more credibility. They didn't want it. And I was pissed at that time. But years go by, you know, I'm starting to think, wait a minute. It finally dawned on me that I was 15 years ahead of the UFO community. That I that what I did, because I was out there on the mountains. I was out there studying the mountain way before the UFO Hunter show, way before Ancient Aliens, okay, way before some of these other shows were even was even a thought. I was out there in the field documenting the petroglyphs, matching the petroglyphs to the UFO sightings, understanding the history of Phoenix, understanding what these creatures are. And so my information just blew the doors off people. It just went right over their heads. They didn't understand because they're, they're looking for spaceships and technology and, and, and aliens, man, right? But I'm talking about something different. I'm talking about flying snakes. I'm talking about flying orbs and lights and shapeshifters and things that are looking like diamonds and crooked snakes and weird stuff that, that we see on the rock art. And just they wasn't ready for it. Ten years later, right, I'm getting people from all over the world now, you know, because now, you know, I'm, I've been doing other, other TV shows, other documentaries. Um, and so now they're, they're starting to contact me. And they're saying, dude, I saw a flying snake. You know, I saw exactly what you filmed back in 2005, you know, and, and all this stuff. So, you know, it's catching up, you know. And, and it really ups upsets me because my stuff has been out here. Since 2005, I did I did an article for UFO magazine. Like I said, I went on to do several cable shows. I I uh, I was in I was involved in the pilot for the UFO Hunter show and the Ancient Aliens TV series. I was involved in all that stuff, and so my stuff has been out there since 2005. But now, all these other cable shows is they're starting to talk about my research, but they're not saying where they got the information from. You know, and if you search my name on the internet, you can find all kinds of stuff. And I've been doing this way before these shows was even anything. You know, so basically, if you really want to look at it, I started all of this. I am the source of what these some of these table some of some of these cable shows are talking about. Matter of fact, I just did uh, uh, the A and E. Um, show called The Proof is Out There and that show will air on A&E sometime this year so find me on Facebook I'll, once I find out once I know something about you know when, when the show is going to air I will post it I will let you guys know uh, so yeah we just did an, uh, a spectacular interview with A&E great bunch of people I, I loved uh, interacting with them great people um, they're going to show some petroglyphs they're going to show some UFO sightings there it's going to be great a and E this year, two thousand four. Check it out. The proof is out there. Um, so yeah, you know, I'm still doing cable shows. I'm still doing, um, <laughs> uh, you know, like paracons. You know, so I'm out there. I'm talking about this stuff, and a lot of people are starting to realize. Wait a minute, you know, this is here in Phoenix, and I'm like, yeah, dude. You know, because we're talking about, we're talking about the sacrificing. We're talking about how the Mayans were here. We're talking about gold tombs. I mean, this is deep, right? And all this stuff can be found in my book. Okay, so I can go on. I can go on. <laughs> we are, we're, we're running out of time because I got, I got a lot to show you. So um, we talked about the book. Uh, so now we're going to show you. I have, some, I have a photograph um, that because, you know, March 13th, 1997, March 13th, 
Um, there's no evidence of a V craft going over Phoenix. Okay, it's been over 20 years, and we there has not been any proof, anything of anything flying over Phoenix. Um, so there's no evidence of that. But recently, in the last couple, well, in the last few months, uh, a photograph, a, a couple of photographs, has surfaced. Um, I'm going to show you one tonight. We're going to analyze it. One has a couple have sur surfaced, um, and this guy is claiming that he did film uh, these V-shaped lights uh, over Phoenix. Um, so we're going to take a look at that and see if that's any credible. See if we can, you know, see if that's real or not. Um, it looks good. Well, we're, we're going we're gonna to go into that. Um, also, uh, I have a video from jo Jordy Gordon um, from Colorado, okay? And when she sent this to me a couple years ago, it blew me away. And, boy, I tell you what, man, this is some kind of living creature. This, this is going to freak you out, folks. This is real. This is what we're dealing with here. Um, it's not a spaceship. It's a living creature. If you ask me, man, it's a monster. <laughs> okay, you know, because this is weird stuff, and I, and this is why I don't believe that that disclosure will ever. I don't think they will ever tell you what's here because it is. It is. It is scary stuff. Um, so, but it's here, and we need to know about it. All right, and this is what I'm doing. I'm bringing this truth to you because this is the stuff that has been covered up for 80 years plus. All right, and so I have uncovered something, um, and I can prove every word that I say. And so, yeah, we're going to show you that video. Uh, there's a new uh, video, a new light that I filmed that no one has seen uh, yet. Uh, I filmed it a, about a month ago. I haven't posted it, so I saved it for the show. Uh, that's We're going to show you that tonight. Um, and also this new this light that I filmed in pastel I used in night vision and pastel and you can actually see on how what the light is doing through a different filter in real time and uh, so yeah so we got those videos gonna gonna uh, play for you to talk about and we got some petroglyphs okay so this is in the book let's talk about let's get into the rock art here and so let's look at this. This is on. Uh, this is in uh, Phoenix. This is on South Mountain. This is on Holberg Trail. Let's get my uh, arrow out here. If we can find it. There it is. Okay. So this is on Holberg Trail. All right. Now let's look at the spiral. Okay. So the spirals are symbols for doorways. Right. And this is what the Native Americans teach us. They say that these are doorways for the spirits to go into the underworld um, so on a scientific analysis on what's really going on they're not really going down into the underworld but they're going down into this ley line into this fault line into this energy line okay and f this is how South Mountain got created was uh, the fault line this is what attracts these beings uh, to to Phoenix, especially South Mountain. That is the source. Uh, so my research, I learned that many tribes from all over the place used to come right here, to, uh, right here to the valley um, for uh, you know trade and and uh, um, to watch these lights, man. To watch what's going on here, you know, because this, this these things was was their gods at the time. So this was a sacred place, and and South Mountain wasn't called South Mountain. It was called Mount Sapoa, Mountain of mercy that was the name that they call this mountain and yes sacrifice was performed on there you can find the altars in my book um, yes there's there's tombs up here on South Mountain you can find that in the book also we'll talk about all this stuff as the year progresses through uh, these shows uh, but right now let's talk about these spirals okay so the spirals are our doorways our symbols for doorways and when the spiral goes clockwise it's a doorway in and when a spiral goes counterclockwise, it's a doorway out. Now let's look at this spiral here. Let's look, let's look at it. So it's going counterclockwise, all right? So that means it's a doorway out. And all these little uh, these dots here, uh, somebody was shooting at it. So this this is high up on a cliff. I had to climb up high up uh, onto the onto the side of a hill, um, right there, <clears throat> um, on Holbrook Trail. 
and I had to climb up to get this photograph. And so people way down below was using the spiral as a target. And uh, so maybe they might have got a bullseye. I don't know. But anyway, that's what these dots are for. But we're looking at the spiral, okay? So it's going counterclockwise, which is a doorway out. All right, now look. Look how it's ending down. You see how it's ending down? That means that the doorway, the emergence point, now most of the time, you see this crack here? The spirals sometimes would end in this crack. All right, and the interpretation on that is the crack is the emergence point. Right, is the doorway to the underworld or doorway coming out of the underworld. But and I don't show this uh in this photograph here. Yeah, it cuts it off. But right here under this is a big crevice, okay, a big like opening, okay? And I believe that's what this is talking about here. This the spiral is oriented down. All right, so it's telling us that the doorway is down here somewhere. If it ended on the crack, that would mean that the doorway is the crack, is the emergence point. So one thing that I've learned that they like to call these things like spirits, right? And I understand why they call them spirits. Because I've seen this, all right? When they come out of the sky, they're solid, all right? They're changing shape, they're changing colors, they're solid. But once they get closer to that mountain, then they kind of change. You can kind of start to see through them. They're like a ghost. They're like a spirit. And you can see through them. And then before you know it, they absorb themselves into the mountain. Yes, they absorb themselves into the mountain. They go in the mountain. This isn't just a legend. This is real. <laughs> I've seen it. I've filmed it. I've documented this. Yes, these creatures has the capabilities of coming in and out of these mountains. And like I said before, the Native Americans have always uh, have already documented this for us. They're telling us, look at this. Look, look, look. They're telling us. This is the doorway right here. And like I said before, the petroglyphs are here. On, on areas on where the event took place at. So not only is it telling us a story, but it's also telling us what's here. And right here is a doorway out. So let's enlarge this a little bit. Let's look closer. So if you look real close and see this the yellow arrow here in my book, you can see the outline. So here's this lizard, right? There's a lizard, like an iguana, or a chaka lizard. And you can see him, he's, you know, he's solid, you can see him here. But then look at this, see this right here? You can see his legs, it's like a shadow. It's like a spirit, right? You can see his legs, see his legs there and his tail. There's his body, right? There's his head, right? And so... When we step back and we look at this petroglyph, what is this telling us? What is this glyph telling us? This glyph is telling us that this creature came out of the doorway, out of the emergence point. He was in spirit form. And as he got away from the door, he became more solid. See that? Look at the guy down here. See that? In the man down there and look how big this is compared to this guy right they're huge these things are huge they're big and this is what this glyph is telling us he's coming out of the doorway he's a spirit now he's solid and there's a witness probably the guy that carved this he's got to put him he's got to put himself in that right He's signing his art. He's signing what he saw. He's like, and he wants you to tell you, look, because they didn't have, you know, video cameras back then, camera phones, text messages. They had stone bowlers to record their sightings on, to tell the story on what happened. And this guy here, this man here, he's telling us, look, man, this is what I saw right here on this mountain.
this is in Phoenix also. Now this is on this petroglyph here. This is great. This is one of the petroglyphs that I sent to A and E. And this can be found um, on A Mountain. They call it A Mountain. All right. And this is where uh, ASU football stadium is. Um, but look at this here. Look at this. I mean, can we get not any more plainer than this? <laughs> okay. Can we really look at this and say, what? <laughs> really? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, look, is this, is it telling us what's going on here? <laughs> I mean, how, how more clear can you get? Look at this. This is carved over a thousand years ago. Come on now. We got people and we got the little kid there, probably a mom and a dad and a kid. And they're looking up at orbs in the sky. <laughs> what? And no one has put this together yet? How long has have these rock art been here? Over a thousand years? And we're seeing orbs, circles, lights in the sky? And no one's looking at the rock art around the mountains? <laughs> That just blew me away. That just blew me away. You know, I just can't believe it. You know, like, come on, you guys. How, this is the, this is one of the Rosetta Stones, man, to the Phoenix Lights. You know, there's like, there's like three carvings that, you know, I can actually, you know, this is it. You know, you can't get more clearer than this, right? You know, when it's talking about UFO sightings, there's a perfect example of it right here. Oh, I love it. So that's going to be on A&E. We're going to talk about that. Crazy stuff, isn't it? Okay, so that's uh, that's it on the glyphs, yeah. Okay, so this is the photograph that I was that I mentioned earlier uh, that that has just now surfaced within the last few months, maybe give or take a year, I guess, maybe a year. But this guy claims, first of all, there's no time and date stamp on here. There's nothing that we can see on this photograph. So the story is this guy, uh, I think he was a janitor. He was, he was a custodian. And, or a guard, I think that's what it was. He was a guard. And so he had to, on March 13th, 1997, I think this was 8 o'clock, I think he says he filmed this. Um. He had to go around his property, uh, when this uh, business office that he was watching, and he had to make sure that everything was locked up, this and that. And he had he had to take a camera with him uh, to document some of the stuff, you know, take pictures of, you know, uh, how things looked when he was, uh, you know, guarding the place. He had to take pictures, so he had this this old camera with him. He says he saw these lights. He took like three photographs. This is one of arc of some kind of V-shaped lights in the sky. And you know the first the first photograph is interesting. I should have downloaded that, but I didn't. Uh, the first photograph shows the lights not in this pattern. They wasn't in a V pattern. They were kind of like scattered. Right, and 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 that's kind of true. I would agree with that because I've seen them, I've, I've filmed them. Um, you know these lights. You know sometimes they don't stay in formation. Sometimes they 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 orient t together, and then they get into either a triangle or things like that. Uh, but here, you know, it was with the first photograph. He showed them kind of split up, but then this photograph here, he showed them in, in like this kind of. Uh, V shape, if you would, if you like. And so, what I want to look at is to see if this is fake or not. And we're going to talk about that right now on how we can tell if a photograph is faked. Okay, so this is. Let's look at this closely. I'm going to teach. I'm going to teach you something here. I'm hearing noises in the back hallway there. I don't know. I'm alone. So I don't know if there's a ghost or what. <laughs> that is a completely different story. Okay. I'll keep you posted if I hear anything else. Okay. So here's one way to see if 
a picture has been folk, it has been faked or not, has been photoshopped. So look at the noise. You see all this noise grain here in the photograph, and look at the trees. See all that? And then let's let's analyze a little bit further. Let's, let's see if we can blow it up more. I'm gonna try to zoom in as best we can. I think that's probably the best I can do it. Okay, so let's look at it. Let's let's examine it. So the trees look good because the grainy noise is in with the trees. All right, because if it wasn't, if the trees were put in, the trees would look like crisp, crisp, clear. You know, brand new. I mean, sticker, boom. That's a tree. It looks great. You know, but. How we can tell that it's in the photograph, that it was taken in the photograph, it is kind of grainy too. All right, it's not clear, it's not perfect, you know. It so we can honestly say that this is all these trees here. The background is correct, all right, because we can match this to the grain in the sky. Now let's look at the photograph here. Let's look at the lights. I don't know if I can zoom in anymore. Let's see if I can or not. Let's see if we can get this all the way zoomed in here. Let's see. We're pretty much zoomed in. Okay. Yeah, so look at this. Let's look at this one here. Look at that. You see the green? You see that there? It, it matches. Look. And the thing that, that gets to me also is you can, like, see little sparks. Okay? You can kind of see, like, little, little sparks coming off of these things. And, and that's what they do. They kind of glycerin selenite you know gristling coals in the sky like orange amber lights you know they're kind of they're sparkling dude right you'll see it in the film here and that see that that's that's correct that's real i've seen it i documented i i know you know so that looks good uh the grain looks good everything looks good but can we prove that this was March 13, 1997? No, and that's unfortunate because we can't see, you know, there's no time and date stamp on it. I mean, the meta, the meta, meta data, meta data, I don't know how to say it, the meta data, I mean, has March 13, 1997 at 8 so-and-so p.m., but you can change that. You can alter that, and that's that's kind of messed up, you know, because you know the photograph, you know, when you look at the metadata, the meta, I can't even say it. <laughs> when you look at, you know, when the photograph was was taken, it tells you. But you can alter that, so that doesn't count. That's just um, that's upsetting to me. You shouldn't be able to change photograph dates and times and stuff, you know, on the original photo, you know. So I don't know. I guess you can, uh, but look at this. Look at the sparks in this right here. Okay, so this looks good. I'd have to say that this is a real photograph. Now, if he was good, if he knows what he's doing, and he really wants to to hoax this, and and another reason too, another another reason is you know what he didn't even want to um, give out his name. Okay, he didn't want to give out his name. Um, so the person who filmed this, he's not into he's not into fame or 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 fortune or anything like that, Dr. Jones. You know, he's he didn't want to he he wants to remain anonymous. So that's kind of good too, because you would think if the guy faked it, then he's gonna say, Yeah, I did it. That's me. You know. Put me on TV. But he's not. He's keeping it a secret. He presented these films. And from what I can see, man, it it looks good. It looks good, um, but if he was a clever faker, then what he could have done is he could have computer generated a photograph, put it on his screen, on his computer screen or a television, and take a photo of that. Now that might, all right, that will put in all the distortions. I'm giving you guys secrets. So how and how you can fake stuff. Don't don't listen to me. <laughs> but uh, that would give you the grain, you know. If he was smart, you know, that would give you the grain in in the photograph. Uh, it wouldn't show. I mean, it, it wouldn't show the trees how they were put in. It wouldn't show how the lights were put in. It it would look like that everything was taken at the same time. Maybe, you know, maybe. 
I mean, there still would probably be some flaws in that. You know, to the trained eye like myself would catch all that. Uh, but to be honest with you, I can't see anything wrong with this photograph. It looks good to me, and uh, I would say that it's real. Um, I cannot say that this is proof positive of a V-shaped craft going over Phoenix uh, March 13, 1997, in which he claims because there's no evidence of that. But I can honestly say that in my analysis of my 20 years plus research on photographs and videos and, and experiences, uh, this looks good to me. Looks good to me. It's unfortunate that there's no video. If we get video on that, that would be even better. Okay, let's get into the nitty gritty. What is this? Okay, oh yeah, Las Vegas. I forgot to say, this is Las Vegas, baby. Las Vegas had a major sighting, okay? Uh, in the beginning of 2023, uh, yeah, I think I think this was uh, filmed in April. Okay, so this is right over the the Las Vegas Strip. Now this is great, man. This is great stuff. Let me make sure everything is going to be good on here before I hit the play. Okay, yeah. So let's let's roll this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Oh my goodness! Woo! This is good stuff, people. Look how the grain is in there. Look at the video. Ooh, look, 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 look. See how it just magically popped in like that? Did you see that? This guy, he kind of, he kind of, oh, look at that. He kind of all, he kind of uh, uh, edited his video here. The guy who filmed that. But look at that. That is perfect. Perfect stuff. This is, there's a stratosphere there. We just got back from Las Vegas uh, uh, about a month ago. Um, actually, a few weeks ago. And uh, so, yeah, oh, my goodness, this is good. This is what we want to look for, people. This is what we want to look for, okay? These lights in the sky, look at that. Look, there's a strip. There's Las Vegas right there. Look at these things, and look how they're hovering, okay? If they were flares, they would be following. They wouldn't be moving. You know, they wouldn't stay a perfect line night like that. They would be moving away from each other. Uh, we would see an airplane dropping them out. As a matter of fact, I think later on in the sighting somewhere, you can actually see a blinking a blinking airplane uh, fly by, uh, and, and you know that it's an airplane. So when these lights showed up, there was no blinking airplane. So these are not flares. Uh, flares light up the sky. Uh, we don't see any parachutes. We don't see any uh, any any smoke. I mean, this is good stuff. This is right over Las Vegas. Look at that. Look at that. This is the Phoenix lights, but Nevada lights, Las Vegas lights, guys. This is crazy stuff. Look at this. I love this sighting. Here comes the airplane from the bottom left of your screen. Here he comes. There he is coming over the strip. There he is. You can see that's the airplane. Okay? And you can see him blinking there. You know he's an airplane. He's got a he's, he's got a front row seat of that boy. Ooh, doggy. All right. Now look, look, look. See? The lights are staying there. The lights have not moved. There's there were a couple that kind of disappeared, but these are still stationary. All right? So, if you're going to call these flares, then why are they not moving? <laughs> okay? <laughs> They're not falling. They're sitting. They're sitting still. Okay, is this incredible? This is good, good stuff, man. Good stuff. Right over Las Vegas. That's it, guys. Woo! Look at that. That is just unbelievable. Great stuff. This is good stuff. Okay, there's the airplane. We can see a blinking light. See that? And look how long they're sitting there. Flares by now would burn out. This is great, great stuff. This is the kind of stuff that we need to be looking for. Las Vegas people.
Look at that. Is that incredible? Look at that. Look how long they're there. <laughs> this is exactly what the Phoenix Lights look at, looks like. This is exactly what I was filming in 2004. This is it. Look how they, well, this is a replay. Watch how they just magically appear in the sky. They're coming through that doorway. They're coming through the vortex in the sky. And that was another thing that I failed to mention about the spiral. If the spiral ends up, okay, that means that there's a doorway in the sky okay so it's like a vortex all right that's when these things just magically appear in the sky okay they just the lights are there's nothing there not then all of a sudden you can see these lights appear in the sky so when the spiral ends up there's a doorway there's a vortex in the sky that's what these spirals basically are supposed to representing is like looking down into a tunnel okay looking down into a tunnel all right that's the symbol for a doorway, the symbol for a vortex, okay? So if the spiral is in down, the doorway, the vortex, the emergence point is on the ground or that stone or the crack of the stone. If the door, if the spiral ends up, then it's a doorway in the sky and we're talking lights like this on how they just magically appear. They, they just come in. See that? See that? Now, where's the airplane? See that? So if that was a flare, if we just saw flares, then where is the airplane? We don't see any blinking lights. And again, these things are not falling. They're staying stationary over the Las Vegas Strip. Look at that. Look. Do you just see that? <laughs> Perfect. Okay, and the guy zooms in here. He kind of, he does the replay. See that? We see no airplane lights. No airplane lights dumping these things out at all. Good stuff. Good stuff. This is great, great, great video. Okay. That's the kind of stuff we, we want to look for, people. Lights in the sky, right? And we have to make sure that, you know, we're, we want to make sure we know what we're looking at. We, don't, we want to make sure we don't mistake it for a planet or a star or things like that, right? So, you know, if you want to start hunting these things, I think the first thing you need to do is, is, is film and understand what man-made objects look like and film them. Film balloons, film flares, film trashes, trash flying in the wind, film bugs, film airplanes, film drones, film rockets, film all this stuff. Get your mindset to recognize what normal things look like, planets, drones, rockets, f fireworks, flares, whatever. Because then when someone presents you a video or you see something in real time, you can say, wait a minute, you know, I've, I, I recognize all this stuff that I know is real that can be explained. And that light in the sky, that thing in the sky, that cannot be explained because I study balloons. I know what balloons act like. I know how they move. I know how they position themselves. And I know that they're not in control. They're flipping around each other, okay? So that's what balloons do. We know that, all right? And when we see something in the sky that resembles, that is mistaken, because we think it's balloons, we blow it off, but if you study it, what is it doing? It's in control. It's changing shape. It's changing colors, right? It kind of looks like maybe a cluster of balloons, but what if it's a cluster of orbs, of these UFO orbs? And I'll give you another secret here. These orbs, these lights, this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. I have seen these things shape shift into different things. Okay? So... Just because you see that orb doesn't mean that's it. He's going to morph one of these days. Everyone's going to see it. I've seen it. I documented it. But soon, this is going to catch up. 
You gonna you heard it here first, you guys. These orbs, these lights, these things, they're gonna morph, they're gonna change. Okay, so and that's how we know that it's not crafts, because crafts, you know, they're just it's not biological either. It's not machine, it's not anything that we can really understand. These are living creatures, living entities. And it's it's different. It's way different. And the public needs to understand what's really here. Because we should know. We need to know. If something is in our airspace, we need to know what it is. And we know, we, we don't need to be lied to. I think the public can, you know, I don't know actually because that's a tough that's a that's like a real touchy subject here because you know if, if the government actually came out and told you if they if they came out right now and said hey guys guess what the phoenix lights are real okay and and the petroglyphs you know and, and the flying serpents are real okay and the diamonds and the orbs and all this stuff it's they're 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 real you guys are right. But also, they were the leading cause of what happened to the first Native Americans. They were the reasons why the Native Americans disappeared. Would you be able to handle that? How many people would stay in that city if they actually, if the government came out and said, you know what? The Phoenix Lights are responsible for the Indians' disappearance. There I said it. That is the conspiracy here. That is a secret. That is that is the truth. Okay? Like I said, I was going down this road thinking what everybody else was thinking. But the history, the evidence, the credibility, the facts were taking me down another road and it's something completely different. It's something that hasn't been talked about in well over 80 years and has been covered up. But the information is there. All the information is there. This is not anything like this just isn't me. Okay, I'm not just saying this. This is this this information has always been with us. Okay, I'm just a messenger. I'm bringing this information back to you. If you can't get to the mountain and see this stuff for yourself, I bring the mountain to you. I've been up on that mountain for well over 15 years, long, long time. I documented. I've been from point A to point B. I've been on some of these other mountains around Phoenix. I've documented the petroglyphs. I've seen the formations. I've seen the landscape. I understand the people. And it's the information here, the real history of Phoenix is not what we have been led to believe. It's not what they're trying to tell us here. And this is the reason why they made South Mountain a government park. Why not pick on the White Tank Mountains? Why not pick on A Mountain? Why not pick on the Superstition Mountains? Why pick on South Mountain and make it a government park where nobody can go up there and start digging stuff up, taking metal detectors up there, start digging things up? Why? Why can't you do that? They made it a government park. You can't do that. Well... Because there is gold up there, as the story talks about, as the real history of Phoenix talks about, on how there are gold tombs up on South Mountain, on how there were giants here up on South Mountain, on how the Phoenix Lights actually taught these people how to, to, how to survive. In fact, this is a completely different story than what they want us to believe the whole calm people were. The fiery bird Phoenix rose out from the ashes of the formal civilization, but they failed to tell you exactly who this, this civilization was, who these people were, what they dealt with in their life. Sure, to this day, we, we still use their whole calm canal system. It was the best canal system in the world at that time. Why would they simply walk away from us?
Oh, 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 and get check this out. It was not always a desert back in the day. There's evidence of waterfalls on South Mountain, waterfalls all over the place in Phoenix. Phoenix wasn't a dried up desert when the Hohokam and the Mayans were here. It was a tropical like landscape. And we can see the archaeology and the weathering on the rocks. And all this points to this evidence. This is where the credibility lies. Not where, not just some archaeologist who's trying to keep this hush hush. He's not telling you about Charles Holbrook, the first park ranger. Not talking, ta not talking, not talking about uh, uh, the sacrificing altars. Not talking about how the Mayans were here. Not talking about the gold that's buried up there. Not talking about it. all this is covered up. It's hush hush. They don't want you to know. But that's the truth. It's all in my book. Okay, whoo. Let's move on because. We're running out of time. Okay, so this this light here, I filmed this light. Let's make sure everything's gonna go good here before I play. I filmed this light going over the mountain. Uh, let's see, about a month and a half ago. I haven't posted it, you know, because I've seen and I filmed so many lights before, you know. So okay, everything is good. Okay, so let's go ahead and play this. And we can see a light right up here. Oh, my arrow is going crazy. Here we go. There he is. I first saw this light, and he's really kind of low to the mountain there. And so I just picked up the camera and started filming it. And you can see the mountain there. And there's the light. You can barely see him. This is new stuff. I, I just filmed this about about a month ago, give or take. Like, he kind of disappeared, didn't he? Mm-hmm. And I filmed lights out there on this mountain before. This is a different this is a different mountain here. This is not South Mountain. And I, I, I like using a night vision camera, too, so... Uh, in my uh, in the uh, Paracon that I did, I opened up for the first annual Tombstone Arizona Paracon. Uh, my UFO show was the first act on stage. I opened up uh, the acts, and I actually showed in my presentation in my UFO show. I showed um, a light that I filmed a few months prior to that in night vision, and and it looked pretty much like this. It was it was a lot bigger, and it disappeared in, in the mountain here. And uh, so yeah, that was pretty cool. And you can you can see that video on on my other uh, on my YouTube channel, uh, the Phoenix Lights Petroglyphs in the Sky, uh, YouTube. Um, there you can see old old shows and uh, old UFOs and new UFOs and stuff like that. So uh, make sure it says the Phoenix Lights Petroglyphs in the Sky, all one word, um, to find me on YouTube and also find me on Facebook too. So yeah, you can see the you can see the mountain there. You can see he's kind of going down on the mountain, isn't he? I think he disappears right above right above that mountain. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool, huh? So I mean, those of you who have been following me all these years know that this isn't nothing. We've we've seen that before. Uh, but yeah, but you're you are the first one to see that one right here on the paranormal family channel right here on Roku Make sure you tell your friends sub subscribe to this channel and uh, and Thank you guys for being here <laughs> Let's look at this. Okay, so This is gonna blow you away guys. This is this was filmed in Colorado uh, in 2020 is when we got got hold of this video. I've talked about this video in in my past shows, uh, but my wife Pam recently just posted this and we and jogged my memory. I'm like, dude, I gotta show this on the on the show. Uh, so yeah, so Jody Gordon filmed this. Now, this is what we're this is this is the kind of stuff that we need to really pay attention to. Okay, so look at this guy here. Look at this thing. Let's go ahead and play this. Look. Let's look how it moves. This is going to blow you away. Look at that. 
Look how this thing is moving, okay? This is filmed in the sky, right? And look how delica delicately <laughs> it's moving. It's not bobbing around like balloons would do. Look at this. Look at this thing. This is what we need to be looking for, folks. Look how it's in control of itself. If, if this was a balloon, it would be bobbing around, flipping around, but no. This thing is alive. This thing is a creature. Let's blow this sucker up. Let's get a good look at him. Look at this guy. Let's stop him for a minute. Holy cow. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Jeez. Look at this thing, man. This is what we're dealing with, ladies and gentlemen. This is some weird stuff. Okay, let's go ahead and play this. Watch what he does. Look at this. Look how he's, he's in control. He's not bobbing around. Okay? Is that something or what? Look at what he's doing there. Look how he's moving. You see this? This is what we need to look for, folks. Things like this. Holy cow. This is great, great, great video. Oh, look, he just moved his tail up. Did you just see that? Did you just see him move? Look, look, look at this. Oh, my goodness. This is great video. I love this video. Man. And it's up there for a long time, right? Is that something? This is the stuff that we need to be looking for. And when I tell people, if you're going to hunt these things, make sure you try to get a good video camera. I mean, so, some cell phones, they just doesn't bring in... Um, you know, they do tell you some, sometimes you can't zoom in very well. I mean, it's best to use a video camera with a viewfinder and uh, because you don't want to film these things with a window, a video camera with a window because the sun and the glare, it's just really hard. In my experience, it's really hard to, to film. Uh, so it's best to get a viewfinder so you can focus in on these things. Hit the record button, upload that stuff to to computer, and then from there, uh, post them. That's the best way to hunt these things in the film. Look at that thing. Is that crazy or what? Look, look, look. I just love it. Oh, my goodness. That is just crazy. I was like, oh, my goodness. I had to talk about this thing, this thing on the show. See if we can blow it up a little bit more. I mean, is this crazy? That is just insane. That is just totally insane. I'm trying to make it steady for you guys. It's hard to do. Holy cow, man. Look how that thing is just moving. I really I really liked it when he moved his tail up. Did you see that? <laughs> Might have to do a replay on that one. Isn't that crazy? Great stuff. Love this video. This is great stuff. I've filmed some pretty weird and bizarre things, and I've seen some pretty weird and bizarre things. And this one, pretty much, this one is very good. <laughs> you know? And look, come on, come on, people. Look how it's moving. It's in control. Okay? It's alive. All right, it's alive. Um, it's not from another planet. Mm -mm. This is their planet too. This is their world also. They have always been here, okay? And it just so happens that when man starts to make war with each other, that's when these things really come out to play. That's when you will see more and more of them. So they don't know when... Oh, it started over. Look at that. Look, look, look. Holy cow. Jeez, man. Look at that thing. <laughs> wow. So it is a miracle, right? 
you know, but we really have to understand what we're looking at here. You know, I mean, yeah, this is spectacular. I mean, this is just magical stuff, but we have to remember the past, man. We have to remember what these things are here for, you know? And so, I mean, it's all good and gravy that they're up there, but I mean, <laughs> once they, if they ever start to come down and, and I mean, it's, it's going to shock a lot of people. And, and that's why I'm, I'm here presenting this stuff to you. Uh, this is credible stuff. This is not CGI uh, crafts and UFOs and spaceships and aliens that you see on, on YouTube. This is real, right? This is what they're hiding from you. Oh, my goodness. Look at that thing. I'm going to stop. That. Oh, my God. Is that crazy? Woo! <laughs> I just can't get over it. This is some interesting stuff, okay? Look at that. It looks like he's got a little bow tie there. Hmm. Got some ears, right? This is just amazing. It's just... And look how it moves, okay? And because, you know, I discovered this in 2005, I I know what to look for. And, and, and this is why I'm doing these shows. This is why, you know, I... I don't make any money from what I'm doing. Like I said, the, the I don't make any money from my books. I don't make any money from my TV appearances. Uh, I don't make any money from my lectures and my other UFO shows that I do. Um, and so it's not about money. It's about getting the information out because I find this fascinating, okay? And it's really, it's really fun to look at. It's scary to look at. And I have, I have seen it firsthand. And so I just want to bring this to the attention of the people and say, look, you know what, guys? This is it, man. I have seen some crazy things. This is, I didn't tape this, but I've seen pretty much stuff like this before uh, that will blow your mind away. And uh, and this, this information needs to be out. This information, uh, the truth needs to be told. And we can't be lied to. We can't be misled anymore. We have to look at our at what's credible here. And uh, this this is what I do. We, we talk about serious, credible stuff. And you just have to look at this and just know that look, this this isn't acting correctly, <laughs> right? This is just different, right? Who has seen this before, right? Hasn't been seen in well over a thousand years. And the thing of it is, you always got to be ready to because you're going to see some bizarre stuff in the coming years, coming months, actually. This, this, is, this stuff's really going to start escalating. And uh, so you're going to see a lot of stuff. So you need to have a video camera ready, all right, because you're only going to see it once. And I know, like, like because the first time, you freeze. You see it, and you're like, and your brain can't, comprehend what it is right so you just you freeze all right i'm gonna back this up i love the beginning look at that thing dude <laughs> so the first time you know when you see these things you're gonna freak out all right there's no question because everybody does all right and but you gotta remember to jump on that video camera okay I know you're trying to figure it out I know you're you're at all but if you can try to remember to record it because guarantee you're not gonna see this again you're not gonna see any of this again this is a one-time thing all right and so you need to be ready so when they appear Jump on that camera, film it, because you're never going to see it again. And and no one's going to believe you. And even still, you know, the people are, oh, we're looking for spaceships and aliens. They're going to say, oh, it's got to be a balloon, right? Because that's all they can understand is balloons. But look at this thing. <laughs> I just can't get over it. <laughs> I mean, that's some freaky stuff, right? I love it. 
that's what's here, ladies and gentlemen. This is what this is what we have to look forward to. This is this is what's here. This is what's here. This is what we can prove. This is what the petroglyphs are saying. What rot right? Because why? He's morphing. Right? He's changing shape. Let's look at him at first. Look at this. He's morphing. He's an anthropomorph. Look, look, look. Look what he's doing. Woo! <laughs> I'm sorry. I love it. I just think it's crazy. You know, and, and, and I've seen it. I've seen these things. And, and whoo, it's heavy stuff. I'm telling you, it's heavy. It's deep. Okay? So when you see them, you're going to freak. But remember, it's not time yet. Okay? So they obviously know you are there, and they obviously know that you are out there hunting them. Okay? And that's sometimes they want that. Okay? So once they know that you're filmed, that you're going out there and filming them, and you have an open mind, they will appear to you. They will show up. I'm living proof. I, I did it for so many years. Okay, so this one here, this one was filmed. This is one of my Phoenix Lights I filmed in 2004. All right, so let's go ahead and play this. Okay, so this right here, this is in, in, in regular mode, all right? This is a light on the east side of South Mountain. This is right over a power plant. There's a power plant on Ray Road. Okay, here's night vision. <clears throat> I switch it over to night vision. You can get a perspective on what it's doing there. This is right over a power plant on Ray Road. This is where I was filming these lights. These lights are over the power plant, absorbing the energy. They did that this whole the whole summer of 2004, right? Massive formations. I got like over a hundred sightings of these Phoenix lights out there by South Mountain on the east side on Ray Road, hanging over this power plant. All right, this is it, folks. Look how it's kind of pulsating, how it's kind of flickering. See that? We're gonna switch it over to a different to a night vision shot or to a a, a different filter. And look how it's kind of pulsating in with in 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 on itself, and that's it. Kind of looks like, you know, on real time when you're staring at them, they're like plasma energy, right? They're like balls of energy, orbs of energy. They're pulsating, right? They're absorbing that energy. This is why they're here at South Mountain. It's because of that fault line. Now, this power plant on Ray Road is boiled down into that fault line. Right, and doing more research into that area, I learned that that was the major spot for the Hohokam Indians. It was right here where this power plant sits today. This is real time here. This, I'm, I'm changing filters now. And you can kind of see uh, the power plant, but yeah. Okay, now I'm switching over to the pastel filter. But this thing is bored down into this fault line. Now, this is the exact same spot where the Hohokam Indians lived at. This was the major spot on where the Indians lived at. It was right here where this power plant sits today. And, of course, look, there's the light. Now, look at that. No one has seen the Phoenix Lights in such a way, in this way before. This is real time. I'm using, I'm filming this real time. And as it's out there, I'm experimenting on it, doing different filters. Ooh, look at that. Look at that thing. Look how it's kind of pulsating within itself. See that? No one has seen this before. No one has seen this kind of perspective on a Phoenix Lights before. This is new. See that? It's it's like it's kind of like pulsating in on itself. It's kind of like flashing in and out, right? And if there are flares, then I mean, come on now, we would see 
the um, the smoke. And one thing, let's see if I can stop it real quick. See, remember how I was? Remember on the Phoenix Lights uh, photograph that we were talking about on the sparks? Look, look, look. See, there's a perfect example. You see how these like sparks? If you look real closely, you can see sparks around this thing. That's how I knew that that light that we talked about, the, the V formation photograph of what was supposedly filmed in, in March 13, 1997. Um, that's what made that credible. Um, the, the noise of, look, even in the videos, we see the noise um, in the photograph and the sparks that I was seeing because why? I have seen it before, you know? You see the sparks there? This is exactly what we were seeing in that photograph. So yeah, that's why that's one of the reasons why I said yes, that photograph is good. Whether or not it was filmed the 13th of March, 19, 1997, is debatable. There's no evidence. But from my experience on seeing the lights firsthand and seeing the sparks, I knew that that, you know, and it wasn't placed in, you know, it wasn't CGI. It was a real photograph, real sparks, real everything. So, this is night vision here. And look how it just disappears. Did you see that? Let's watch that again. Look how they just go into that doorway, right? Watch how it disappears. And I caught it. I caught it disappearing just as I was, you know, going back to the regular film. See how it just... It just vanishes. Look at that. See that? No evidence of flares. No smoke. No parachute. No airplanes. You see that? Crazy, crazy stuff. I believe that is it. Thank you guys so much for joining us. And we're going to leave you. We're going to leave you with this sighting here. And uh, so thank you guys so much uh, for tuning in. Uh, make sure that you uh, uh, tell your friends about the, par the, the Paranormal Family Channel right here on Roku. And uh, I will kick it off and say goodnight to you guys right here. And make sure that you check out our next show because it's going to be another great one. Thank you guys so much for joining us. And we will see you next time. Keep your eyes to the skies and video cameras ready. Happy New Year, you guys. See you later. In a different way Maybe he has come up all hours away Too much goodness is a sin today I'm checking out the show With a glassy eye Looking at the sun dancing through the sky Did he come by UFO? Just a little different than a previous year I think the happiness is getting very near I'm checking out the show With a glass of eye Looking at the sun dancing through the sky Did it come by UFO? Did it come by UFO?